Meet the band, Tom Steve Jones, your host for tonight, along with Beth Allen, Earl Andrews, and our special host tonight, popping in to say hi, Moon. And here we go. Spring tonight, no snow. Spring. Wait, spring. Turn yourself on. Wait. Turn yourself on, baby. Oh, you go right now. Spring. 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 But no snow tonight. We had 11 inches last week. I had 13 or 14 in my yard. I don't know why anyone else would have less, but I had an umbrella up. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. I was in Las Vegas. Everybody, boo hiss. You missed the storm. She did. And she doesn't know anything because she, she left it all there. I did. Yeah, uh, thank no, you. Were you coughing? Was I coughing? Coughing, coughing. Oh, coughing. Coughing. <laughs> no, I was not golfing. No golfing. I was sitting by the pool. You're sitting bold. I was sitting <laughs> by a pool. It was 89 in one day. The water? No. The sun, the, the air was 89 degrees, and I was sitting out there trying to get a tan. I'm getting on. I'm, I'm getting annoyed. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm so bad. I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed. Ladies and gentlemen, Moon, Jesus, Moon, Moon right here. If you haven't had a chance to be here, it's been a while. It's been a while. Been a while. Thanks for coming out. We appreciate that. Well, Moon's Corner is going to be uh, coming up very shortly. Um, Actually, I'm going to have some music. I'll be interviewing uh, a couple of candidates for mayor of Allentown. So if you have any questions that you would like you to ask them, uh, send them over to rockinthevalley.com. Message us. No. Yeah, I like. Uh, I don't like holding the mic. No, you don't have to. Just, <laughs> I don't have to. No, I'll hold it, and then you can just talk into no, them. Well, you hold it. <laughs> okay, you two start again. Get off the... Last time you two She's still at the beach. <laughs> Uh, no, and also I posted today. Uh, well, I actually think you see yeah, no, I, I've been building here. Okay. Well, I posted that uh, I'm looking for musicians to form this rockinthevalley.com band. Ooh. And it's going to be 50s to 2017 plus homemade ones. So if you're interested, Get a hold of Moon on Moon's Corner, rockinthevalley.com, and I'll be holding auditions very shortly. The reason why I'm doing this is because I've been getting calls uh, about Rock in the Valley and doing something at fairs and carnivals and other functions. And so I've been sending other bands out. It's like, well, maybe it's time for me to do something and make it part of Rock in the Valley. And I am from the Valley, so let's just another step. Sounds cool. Yeah. I'll talk to you about it. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay, so tonight we've got ourselves a really cool night coming out of you. We've got uh, Charlie Brown. Four of us. Four of us here. Ryan. We've got the infamous Charlie Brown. And I'm really glad that you two will come out. Oh, you're not the same. Put your hat back on. Okay. There you go. Yeah, yeah you don't need to flash that. We've got Charlie Brown coming out. He came out for us tonight. We've got Frank Porter. And is it acoustic bike trio that I do? Uh, um, acoustic, I don't know. No, you're not bike trio, you're acoustic blues pricing. Yes, uh, if, if Leon comes, we'll hopefully add some. Okay, that's cool. Add some he that's usually good. gets out a little way, so he'll, he'll probably be here if he's ever come. That's good. And he'll carry the bass for it. There's a new band in New Fort now. So um, we're going to put uh, Charlie Brown up first and we'll get going. And Charlie on the hot seat. Charlie is first up on. Oh, I know I have a mic up there. It's going to be hard for the fall. Oh, well, he can use it. Right. I mean, unless he's going to do some salsa dancing, right? No salsa dancing. You don't have his red suit on. 
Where you want to eat? Come down to the jet port and eat. Come down yeah, to the jet port and have some good eats. I gotta tell you what. <laughs> the stromboli we used to die for. It's a food group. It is good. It's a, stromboli is an entire food group. You know, it's so good. How good is it? How good is it? I knew I was gonna get that. I don't. I don't have one. It's no. Anyway, he's getting set there. You got a mic up there? Okay. And Leon has Leon has Leon is in the building. Oh, Leon Micah. has arrived. Thank you very much. I'll tangle up here. Leon Russell. So I'll walk up here and stand on my X. Stand on your X. <laughs> yeah. She she did a movie, you know. My X. Not my first one, my second one. Yeah, it's called Godzilla. Anyway. Yeah, that's right. So, Charlie, how you doing? Not bad, how are you? Good. Did you recover from the music awards? Yeah. Yeah, I did. You were fabulous. Oh, thank you. That was really cool. I got that on tape, too. Uh, I was here Sunday night, and they were playing it back on uh, on uh, uh, the TV station. Yeah, I think... Uh, somebody told me that... Uh, uh, that's so was Electric House. Yeah, so this Electric is carrying yeah, they, play, they played it twice already. Yeah. Um, you put it up on, I don't know if it's on rotation with uh, Rock and the Valley, but it is on Mixed Cloud. Yeah. Got both the pre-show and the actual show. I didn't stick around for the pre-show. So, now that's the, uh, the uh, what do you call that? Did everybody, did everybody get on the stage? Uh, I don't know. Who, it's on that. I, I could. I hope she's just patient. I see you. Hey, wait, I'll tell you what. This one we sit now. I I usually have to skate early so I can get my drunk out downstairs. Um, but I was really glad I stayed through the bulk of everything there. And um, did you see the large flower heads did again? Mm -hmm. They did that um, Super Max song. And I cannot remember the name of it. It's, it's all the harmonies together, and then they finally get wild at the end because they were just fabulous. And then Knight with the violin, okay, and right down through them. The performances were really good. It was just a really great show, a really great show. But uh, it was really good seeing you, but they come right out to me. Everybody's talking about that red suit. Everybody's talking about my red shoes. Everybody's talking about my red suit, my red shoes. They had to take a picture of my shoe. Well, we get the red suit, the gold suit. The gold suit, you look pretty sharp and good. Thank you. Someone, uh, so I told someone that you were going to be on the show tonight, and they said, I'm supposed to ask you how many years you were in, put in the uh, music industry. I just said he's over 21. <laughs> You've been to see. Let's see. Hold on. Well, let's one one, one more one, here. 21. 21. Wait, this week here. <laughs> no, that's about it. <laughs> About three and a half, tw three and a half, twenty-one. I can't believe that. It's it. I mean, you get up on stage, you just have so much energy, you just go. Well, so they want to know how long I've been in the music industry. Huh? Over sixty-seven years. That's something. Yes. Really, really something. Over sixty-seven years. I've been performing. From gospel to R&B, jazz. Oh. What was your start? Yeah, what was your start? What grabbed you? Right? Yeah. I know. Yeah. You, know, you were in church and you do? I love gospel music. Uh, we grew up in the church. And uh, that's why I started, that's, that's why I started singing in the church. When my brother, we had a gospel group. And we started that. And then when two of my brothers were killed, uh, the rest of them didn't want to go on. So we all went in different directions. And I, I, and I started out with singing blues, actually, as a kid, singing blues. How do you sing something by accident? How do you sing something by accident? No, I said actually. Oh, actually. Oh, okay. Um, I started out by singing blues, like Jimmy Reed. Uh, Lightning Hopkins and 
some of the old guys that used to see, I'm from the South, all the, all the guys that used to have old guys on a Sunday afternoon, fill a fire, get a jug of whiskey, get a jug, right? A washboard, you know, steal a guitar. And they sit around the same old blues song to make them up the same. Get drunk, eat some fish, <laughs> tell stories and play music. And I used to like that. I used to sit around and watch it, you know, when I was a kid. And then they started going to the jip joints. Yeah. And that's where your buddy Elvis Presley got his from. The jip joints. So I always wanted to perform in one of the juke joints because they were screaming and poaching. They had the big jukebox sitting up there and all that. I always wanted to perform in one of the juke joints. So one day, my uncle was in there and he said, I'm going to bring my nephew in here. And uh, he liked Jimmy Reed's song. He like came out, we were all kids, we were all standing out there looking inside the court. And when I was like, oh, yeah, he's standing out there listening. He come out there and he goes, my nickname was Baby. Baby, come here, boy. So I went in, and all the other kids were sitting there crapping. Oh, yeah. and, then, and we started playing, um, a Jimmy, they started playing a Jimmy Reed song. And it was something like this, you got me running. You got me high, you got me running high, high up in the way you go, baby. See, and that's when I started, right there and there, with that little squeaky voice. Yeah, I can see you getting started. It was fun, though. Thank you. You get up on stage, I and mean, last time I saw you perform, was what the hell did And. You come out. I mean, you can tell you're, you're into your music a lot. And you and Bobby Solomon are like a real partnership on stage. They get kicked out of two guys. Yeah, we've been together a long time. Um, you, you come out and you get right into the crowd. You sit at the table with the guys and you make them push. Okay? And that's part of your job because that's entertaining. And you love it. And then, you know, it keeps you young, right? Not only that. I always figured, I've always figured that if you're an entertainer, you go all out, you give it your all. And where I come from, that's the way we done in church. When we sang in church, we had no guitars, we had no drums, we had nothing. All we had was hand and feet. And when we walked down the aisle singing gospel songs, those sisters would fall out, you know. All these young boys walking down the alley, you know, used to be shooting crap or something. So we man made sure that I got it too. So that's how it all came about. Is learning how to do that when you walk down the aisles, walk down one side of the church, walk up the middle, come back down, come back up the middle again, and hear your song. Meanwhile, you're stopping in peace. Entertain. You know, and that's where, that's where I got that from. And I was told that I was the first person to have a gun around here. So I was, well, it's definitely rare, because most people sit around the stage. Um, a few weeks ago, we had a group in here, uh, the dancer. And the lead singer, she would get out to the old dance floor, she went crazy out there. Okay? I wasn't say crazy, but she was dancing and moving around, but she was doing the act on the stage still. She wasn't interacting with the crowd like you did. So there's a difference. And not to say she was right or wrong, it's just that, that was her act as opposed to your act. Right. Uh, many years ago when I used to DJ, I used to get out to the crowd. I stand in the middle of people crazy. And, and it, it, it works because you take me to the crowd. You know, and that's, that's, that's what you do. My thing is, is getting, getting people to participate. Get people to participate, you know, uh, making them feel like they're a part of it. When I go out and I sing to, I don't want to sing to the ladies, I sing to the lady and the guy, you know. But 
my main objective is to sing to the lady. But the such a fact that if you sing to the lady, us men are like animals. <coughs> I'm serious. We're like animals, you know what I mean? Uh, but there's a lady, you're just like a hound dog. You can smell it. So you're going to go where the ladies are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You see what I'm getting to? I got you. <laughs> All right. So if there's a lot of ladies in the place, the men are going to follow. Mm -hmm. There's your crowd. Yep. So that's what I want to do. Now, again, you mentioned gospel several times here. It's a very basic gospel. And you're one of the few people that will walk up to you and say, have a blessed night. You know, God bless you. God bless your family. You're, you're a very... You know, religious man. I know you. I can't get to know each other a long time, and that's how I got to know you. Spiritual. Just to make the point, I can say you're one of my best friends. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I do. Um, I have five dollars. Anyway, uh, I got I got two fifty. Two fifty. That's the ball. I can hear two fifty off the roll. Anyway. <laughs> say what? <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the, in your opinion? What's the healing power of music? Why, you know, why does people get into this? And I, and, and I realize that this is just reaching out there and grabbing that answer, but what's the healing power of music? You've been doing it for so long. You're right, that is a hard question. My theory is that it's the heart and soul. It's all of what you put into it. Here, music is a healing mechanism. All the way around, it heals wounds, it heals pain. If the music is good, you can have pain and you get up and you want to move. If the music is good and you're down and you're feeling out, you get up and you feel a little better for that time. If you're stressed and you're feeling like you want to kill somebody. If you listen to the right song, you'll bring that mellow, mellow you out. That's my theory. And that's the reason why I do what I do. Because when I say I want people to feel what I'm doing. You, know, you may not hear, you may hear me sing a song and you say, well, I tell you, but I ain't singing all the words to that the song right no, because I'll put myself in there. I'm not singing for him, I'm singing for me. See what I'm saying? My thing is, when I work all week, I do whatever I gotta do all week, I take all my frustrations out on that microphone. That's what I do. That's my way of doing it. That's my stress. I don't drink, I don't smoke. That's my stress reliever. I, I could be all not singing for two or three weeks at a time. But once I hit that stand, once I hit it, it's all going on. It's all coming out. Right? Yeah. You know? That's that's my theory. I got it. I got it. I I, I, I know you're saying that's I, just I, what, that's just the way I feel. That's what I do. Um, from a keyboard perspective, I play keyboard, and if I am not on that keyboard at least once a day. Okay, I'm not, if it's wrong. Uh, years ago, when I would come home from work. I used to work uh, in a power plant, okay? and there were days where it was not fun. <laughs> and Kane came home, and I sit down playing the piano, and I sit there, and I bang that thing out of tune. And my dad came over, he told me, because you gotta take it easy, right? <laughs> but you're right. You sit there, and you leave. Correct me if I'm wrong. You sit there, you're singing, you're not here. Wherever that music takes you, if you're singing my girl, like you're thinking about my girl, okay, or you're, <laughs> you're in the land of Oz, maybe, you know, the lollipop field, or whatever. Yeah. whatever you're singing about, that's what you just took yourself to. You know, that's what I, that's, I just, you know, I, I guess I go numb. Yeah. You know, I, I, I feel what I'm doing, but I go numb. Uh, like I said, people always say, man, sometimes Charlie Brown ain't singing the right song. He ain't singing the word, right words for the song. Well, it don't take for a second for me to make up something in that song that makes sense. Just a couple of seconds, that's all. You know? And it ran, believe it or not. <laughs> it ran. So I just, okay, so you're into the moment here, okay? You're, you're into your moment, you're singing, and then something interrupts you. 
be in somebody your phone or whatever. Something interrupts that moment that you're in, that place that you went to. Does it feel like someone kicked you in the head and shocked you? No. No? You come out pretty easy? No way. You don't, you don't get interrupted. Attention. Was that like I said, you don't pay it any attention. You know, like I said, I'm numb. Okay. Like I was sitting here on the phone, right? I just said, oh my God, here we go. <laughs> well, yeah. Stop. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's not safe. Normally, when I got my phone on and I'm on stage, I turn it off anyway. The only person I'd have to answer to is my fiance. And when I tell her, when she knows when I'm on stage, I don't not, not at the time I don't even have with me. Yes, he is a smart man. <laughs> yeah, safe too. <laughs> well, the reason I ask that is because sometimes I find when I'm very focused on a piece of music and I'm working on it, and somebody interrupts me when I got my whole mind focused on it, I find myself kind of coming out of the haze, or a haze rather. That's why I was curious if you see that. And if you're really focused in on the piece, all of a sudden it's like if you're being jarred awake. People, you know. See, uh, another thing I want to say about uh, about this. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused. I really am. I'm confused. I, I don't know why, but I'm confused. People are telling me. Uh, I, I just is that. I don't know. Maybe I, I can't handle all this publicity and stuff that's hanging on me here. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know how to take this, but the people are telling me, yeah, Charlie Brown, you're good, you're good, you're good. I'm just me. You know what I mean? I'm just me. I don't think I'm good. I don't think I'm fantastic. I just think I'm Charlie Brown. That's why you're doing the Thank you. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Do you have a Come on. Thank you. You know, it's, it's the humble musician. It, it's just. It's a little overwhelming when you look at, I look at my Facebook page and I see 3,000 people. And I'm going, what? Where they come from? Why? 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 I'm, I'm, I'm just me. Who? I'm just me. Yeah. Why are 3,000 people following me? I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, for the life of me, I don't have a slightest idea. But all I can say is, I do what I do, I love what I do, and I, I even had a person come up to me at work. I'm at work. And a lady came in to get a car done and she goes, is that Charlie Graham over there working? And the, one of the guys, one of the techs said, yeah, that's Charlie Graham. I said, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a star, you know? And I'm going, uh, he told me that. I, I knew who the lady was, so I turned around with me. <laughs> I went back to the, Back to the garage because I, I, you know, I don't know how to take it. I just, you know, I you're just a very humble man. Okay, that's one thing. You're very humble. And, but to answer your question, the Bible tells me, the meek shall inherit the earth. There it is. The best musicians out there are actually very humble people. We all have egos. All of us who can step on this stage, I said this more than once, we are type A's. We have to be a type A. We get up there and blow it out. Whether you're an MC or you're a lead singer in a band or a drummer or whatever, you have to have that kind of gumption to get up in front of people and perform. Okay. At the same time, you've got to be humble about what you're going to do. Because if you're not going to be humble, if you're going to get there a piece of that egotistic, narcissistic jerk, how far are you going to go? And you and I both know those people. You know, a lot of that. Yeah. And they don't last. They don't. You know, I mean, look at Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond one time did a concert, and his voice went. And they said it was one of the worst concerts he ever did. He personally refunded all the ticket money for the people that paid for it. Okay? He didn't have to do it. They could take the money and said, hey guys, you came to the concert tough. He's a humble man. You guys got stained. How long has he been around? He was doing uh, Chuck Berry's music. Look at Chuck Berry. Look how long he's been around. Yeah. Well, most of them. But it's these humble people that have dominated the music scene, who are dominating the music scene here, yourself. Dana's a very humble woman, okay? Yeah, she gets <laughs> on her music. She loves her music. Of course you're gonna love your music. You love yours, I love mine, okay? Paul doesn't have any, okay? 
Paul, Paul throws garbage cans down this deck and says he's still hanging up. So, <laughs> but you know, it's it's the humble stuff, and you know, you do it. and the moment a guy turns evil, people don't want to deal with it. I I I don't particularly care for those egotistic people. Uh, I, I like what they do, but I just I just think if you if you're doing what you're doing and you don't you're not I don't think about what people are thinking about me. I really don't. I really don't. I could yeah, it's got the bad yeah. stuff. I could care yeah. less, right. you know. But the good stuff, I, I just don't think about what people think about. I, I don't, that's the reason why I say I'm wondering. I'm lost and I'm confused. Well, yeah. what you maybe is a better explanation. Your focus is on your music. Yeah. Rock in the Valley's focus. My focus is on Rock in the Valley. What can I show up a couple of next? Okay. That's what my focus is. Do I pay attention to what else is going on? To a degree. Okay, but I really don't know everything else that's going on. I don't. You know, um, I'm concerned about what am I going to do on the next show coming up? Where's my focus going to be for the next thing? It's a job. Excuse me. Why do I have to do that on the air? Uh, yeah. That's terrible. Uh, I can't wait for this morning to be over. Um, the. Uh, oh, for fan fun. If you're focused on what you're doing, and trying to do what you do well, which is what you do, which is what Dana does, which is what Bobby Solman does, Paul does this, Earl, okay, Leon. A lot of guys are really into doing this stuff well. That's it, and you become good at your trade. But if you're so concerned about everybody else in your gossip, gossip, we love gossip. That's for Joan Rivers and, and Don Ripples, okay? You know, we're not gossip. That's why I like it. Unless it's really good. Well, yeah, I, give it, I give my band all the props. Yeah, I, I really do because I look at it this way. I can't do it by myself. I can't, no, you can't. but I don't want to do it. Uh, I can't play all those instruments. Uh, and if it wasn't for them, uh, we wouldn't have kicked the award. Uh, we wouldn't play at all. You know, and I, I give all. They're uh, like my brother. Even the ones that are not in the band anymore, you know, are like my brother. And when they were in the band, we all got along. And we had a very, very slow turnover. And that's what I like. And that says something. Yeah. Because then people are turning over not because they're not working with you. They're turning over because they've got the project and moving on to something else. Um, to say the thing, we have we built our team. Yeah, I've got a very good team. If it wasn't for this team, like you, like what you're talking about with your band, the Pretorius Crew. I, you know, I, I don't really play music, but I still have a team. I've got a very good team. I'm very thankful for them. Okay, because otherwise, I would have quit a long time ago. <laughs> I hate you. you know, it's a lot to pull in. So, so, so you're playing out. Okay, I know you don't play on a super regular basis. So in other words, you don't play every single week or that kind of thing. But so, where are you playing at? Uh, next? Well, we're uh, April seventh. We're over at the Perfect Streets in Hampton uh, from nine to one, and we have a private party coming up on the twenty sixth, somewhere here in Alabama. Hopefully, you'll find out soon, Blair. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we're doing a couple, well, about three or four private parties, so they, 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 I like private parties. And our private parties is better than the club. There's no truth. You don't misbehave, man. No, 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 because the reason why I like it is because you don't have to bring a crowd. There you go. <laughs> They're already yeah. there. Yeah, yeah that's true. true. Yeah, yeah. About, okay. You don't have to worry about the crowd. They're already there. But, uh, that's good. Yeah. We don't play a lot, lot, like we used to. And I don't know why, but hey, I take it, I accept it as the way it comes, you know what I mean? I don't worry about it, I don't worry about it. It's something that I love to do, it's something that I love to get paid to do, you know what I mean? I'm not looking for pay to make a living out of it. That was the case I was talking about. <laughs> the other thing. 
<coughs> but, uh, you know, it, I don't know why we're not saying as much as we do that. I think, I think our band is pretty doggone good, I think. And uh, so do a lot of other people. But uh, that's just my thought. I guess I'm a little prejudiced when it comes to that because I'm part of it. But, uh, <coughs> Um, it don't bother me not to play because I, I've been out here so long that I, I got to the point, all my guys, all the guys in our band play in different bands as you know. And they can play whenever they want to play. I don't, I'm not begging to play. Yeah. But you're, you're also much, very much a local personality too. So we're going to start, see, start. See, here we go. Here we go. See, See what I was just saying? What we're gonna do, we're, we're gonna start a game show. And I'm gonna have you like horse and bean. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll either that or I'll, I'll have you like price is right. We'll, we'll let me do like that. Uh, uh, Bob Barker, you know. <laughs> Bob Brown. Yeah, something like that. Charlie Brown, you know, we'll put you on the price is right. Yeah. Then we'll, 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 we'll I'll have your your dealership give away a car every day. You know, very bad. <laughs> I need one. You need one. All right. We'll have you the first contestant. Oh, and the price is wrong. Okay, so. Anyway, let me check my time quickly. Yeah, that one side. Earl coming right. up. Yeah, him coming up. We got Acoustic Pipes. Uh, Acoustic okay. uh, Blues Project. I get his name all the time. I appreciate your hand. Yeah, I really do. Always. Always. I really do. You guys stick around for a bit. Huh? You guys stick around for a bit? Yeah, we'll stick around for a bit. Uh, I got to rent to the drugstore. So, yeah, so, uh, pick up with some stuff from the store to go to bed and see what they did today. So, I want to make sure she got her stuff. Uh, uh, we're on to late 30. That's what I was going to say. Maybe uh, uh, the girls' band might want to get going by popping up that. Girl, girls' band, girl in the eye. And maybe uh, oh. they, they Frankie Pine. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Y'all want to do something? Yeah. Frank's trying to figure out how to operate his phone. I thought we had one before you. He's. It was, it was funny. I took a I, I took a twine and wrapped around his phone and see if the pull started. He, three weeks went by before he figured out I was wrong. <laughs> this is the other thing. We have a group of guests that we cycle through here, like yourself and Tommy Cito, and that come on on a regular basis. Okay, and it's fun because we know each other. We bust. It's I appreciate you having me. Yeah, yeah, I do. I just appreciate having you on the show. I really do. Um, I'm headed down to Philadelphia on the, um, no, the third, the third week in May to do another internet show. All right. Yeah. Uh, another what show? Internet radio. Show. Oh really? Yeah. Cool. Down, down in Philly. Uh, she called me the other day and asked me if I would. I'd like to come down if you want to play a couple of, you know, the three songs that we had out. If you want to play those, and I said, okay. Well, yeah. let me know what it is. Well, I tune, yeah. If I can't tune down, I'll try to record it or something. Is she, uh, Mark May 9th. Okay, so it's just been a big event here. It hasn't been officially announced yet, but we've got a big event here with Scott Marshall. Oh, yeah? Yep. Big, big event. May 9th? May 9th. So Tuesday night, we're, we're preempting all the shows. Okay. So. Pop in here. I'm not sure what capacity yet, but it's going to be a great show. And uh, with Scott and a lot of people, a lot of good things going on. Good. good. So, anyway, thank you for your invite. So, that's uh, Dry Brown here with a notorious crew, yes. yeah. one of uh, our standards, our mainstays in the valley here. He's He doesn't want to say he's great, but he's, he's a good guy. Let's put it that way. Let's hear it for Charlie Brown. Come on. Thank you very much. Well, Julian, and our next guest will be Frank Porter. Frank Porter has got the number six song in the world. He's going to play that for us today, hopefully, and a couple of his new releases. So I hope you're up here very shortly. So stay right with us. I'm Stephen Jones, Rockin' Valley.